Hello, precious people. I'm Jacqueline Parks, and welcome to my studio. I was going to turn on this light. I forgot. So I don't even know if I can. Oh, there we go. Now you can see me. Ooh. I got this cute little light off of Amazon, of course. Um, so anyways, today I wanted to focus on drawing. Um, I've had a few people interested in learning how to draw. I'll probably do an in-person class um, for those local to me um, pretty soon. Maybe like a third Sunday of the month or a fourth Sunday of the month. Something like that. And um, set that up for us to do a couple hours of just learning how to draw. But today I'm just going to show you what I'm doing um, in my studio. Um, I think one a couple weeks ago we drew an eye and if you've been following my YouTube channel or Facebook or Instagram you'll see all my little short videos of painting an eye a day so that was really fun and for me drawing the eyes is pretty simple because circles and like ovals almond shape but um a lot of other stuff is harder to draw so like I went to the library and let me show you overhead so that you guys can see um, what I did, what I got from the library. Um, so no excuses if you're broke and can't afford to buy books about drawing. You can go to your library and check them out for a little bit. For me, I always check them out for a long time. <laughs> I just keep renewing online. It's like, okay, I needed another couple weeks. And they say, okay. So. Um, here's some of the books that I got at the library. So this one I think we're going to um, use today because I thought it was really kind of cool. And birds are kind of, everybody likes birds, right? But I did get this book, um, Art of Still Life Drawing, which if you've ever um, set up a still life to kind of draw from in real life, you'll see that... Um, you can do different um, techniques for figuring out how to draw them. So like if you were to see a pitcher and cups on a table, you would see the, the horizon line of the cups. You would see, or the table I mean, you would see the inside of the cups from the top. So perspective. Um, and this book actually has some pretty good... Um, forget what page it was on perspective drawing there we go so they start off with this kind of grid and they show how the stuff closest to you is bigger than stuff further away um, also if you're doing a still life which is all on the same table you have to put them behind each other so that gives another element of depth so that's kind of cool um, these blocks, they kind of show how there's a shadow to those cubes. So just drawing something is not enough. You have to put those shadows in there to get depth and dimension. So I kind of like, I kind of like this book. It's fun if you haven't ever drawn before to kind of get started and learn how to do it. Um, I also like this page that was talking about values. A lot of times when we're watercoloring, I say we've got to pay attention to the value of something. And that just means um, whether it's dark shadows or light highlights. So with watercolor, you don't paint the highlights. You keep them white like the paper. And for the shadows, you add more opaque or thicker paint and you get that. Um, many, many layers in in there to get the darker tones so th but this book is pretty good if you want to start doing um still lifes from real life which means you won't have a picture to trace but that's another part of um doing stuff that i would show show you how to do in real life in my class um this is on portraits, which is kind of cool. I like that it shows all these different um, different things that you'll need. So like this is a kneaded eraser. Definitely need a kneaded eraser if you're going to be an artist. Plus it's just kind of fun. 
if you like to do that. Um, I also have this white eraser that's pretty standard. Um, I also use the one that comes on the end of my pencil. And I do use mechanical pencils and I use regular pencils. Um, some pencils you have to sharpen so they kind of get dull. But this is a 6B. I like to use a softer pencil. So the B's are softer, the H's are harder. And the one right in the middle is called HB. So that one you can use as well. Just please don't press hard. If you press hard, it's going to dent your paper and that's where the water is going to flow and settle and the paint's going to settle. But if we're just doing a drawing, we can we can actually um could press a little harder if we're just drawing. Now this is funny how this person is drawing just different things, nose, lips, stuff like that. Um, I love stuff like this with the hair, kind of light. Um, this is funny how they're showing the distance between corner to corner is the distance between the two eyes, I guess. Um, but I don't know if that's necessarily true for everyone. That's what makes faces so unique is when you start getting the measurements perfectly to them. Of course, then you have the three-quarter look of a face instead of straight on, which always is more interesting. So this book, if you guys go to the library, this is really in-depth for drawing realistic faces. Um... So those two books, and then I actually got this one just for fun. It's The Year of the Dragon, and my daughter loves dinosaurs right now, so I was kind of thinking how cool would it be to draw some dragons and things like that. Um, so this book gives you kind of an outline of different dragons from different eras and different um movies it's kind of cool and there's like sculptures of dragons it just kind of goes into the whole thing um so i kind of liked it it was interesting but it doesn't i mean i would have to pretty much trace i don't think it gives you a lot of info on like the shape of dragons heads i mean i guess dragons can be whatever you want because they're mythical creatures so um but yeah that's a fun book to get if you wanted to so this is what we did a couple weeks ago an eye drawing um, I just kind of showed how you can draw some circles to get started let me see here I can't turn the page so today and this is my watercolor paper um, sketch pad so I like that um, let's see what we're gonna draw today so I'm gonna go back to this book which is the birds <clears throat> so this one is pretty cool because I like that it showed her daughter's drawing. She had her daughter's drawings in here when she's like eight years old. And let's try and remember what it's like to be young and not have all of the weight of criticism over the years. Like people saying, Oh, that doesn't look right because like you might look at this and be like that's not an accurate depiction of a seagull but you know what an eight-year-old drew it right um this is kind of what i think messes up a lot of um artists is that they're like oh i can't draw as good as let's look at the one that's in the front here look at this isn't that just gorgeous I love it can you see it or is it shiny so it's just gorgeous y'all I love how beautiful the feathers are everything like the detail on this now do I do stuff like this I do more loose I don't put every little feather I don't put every little detail I put here and there details which your mind fills in the rest so that's kind of how I do things but there's got to be, for most people, a happy medium. So, like, instead of, you know, just drawing a little 
almost like a stick figure bird. We look at this and we think we want to draw this. And yet, how often do you practice drawing? How often do you um, try and trace a picture like this to get your hand just mimicking the shapes? How often do you do that? So I know the title of this video was called um, How to Draw a Straight Line with a Ruler, which one guy told me at the craft show I was at a couple months ago that he couldn't draw a straight line with a ruler. And so to me, that's like you're defeated, right? You can't draw. Because what does a ruler do? A ruler makes it easy to draw a straight line. So when you have that already, you can't do it. What happens? You can't do it. But we're going to try it and see what happens. So I'm going to move this just off to the side for a second. And I am going to show you guys how... Um, if you have a ruler, which I have one that was my dad's. So this is cool. Isn't this a cool ruler? This is like from the 70s, y'all. Um, I remember when he would go to this one, like, fancy stationery store to get a lot of his office supplies. My dad was like, either spend a million dollars on something or 10 cents because there was no in-between for him. It was like the best or the worst, probably. But he loved horses. We used to go to the race horses. So, um, but he had this. It was engraved. It's a pretty ruler. I like it. Anyways, enough about that, right? Um, so we're gonna look at drawing a straight line with a pencil and a ruler. It's not that hard. Um, you just want to apply some pressure, and then, boom, you got yourself a straight line. I don't know if you guys can see. Do I need to zoom? Let me see if we zoom. Oh, no, doggies. Let's not start. Let's not start. There we go. How's that? You see that better? I don't know. I didn't want to draw too dark because of my watercolor. So, like, this is our edge of a, of a table or something or a horizon line. Um, if we want to draw some kind of a bird... Let's see if there's a good picture in here with like a horizon line. Um, so I get a lot of um, inspiration from Pixabay. If you haven't heard of Pixabay.com, they have copyright free and it's wonderful. So you can use images off of the copyright off of that website and be able to Paint them, draw them, use them. Now this is cool. This is kind of like a watercolor right here. And it has this crane with some other little birds, I think. Or are they little flies that are, they're eating? I have no idea what that is. Um, but I like it. Okay. I like how this looks. And look, at there's that little bird right there. And so you might be like, I can't draw that. Right? I can draw that. Well, there's a couple ways you can draw that. You can look at it and try and du duplicate it by just letting your eyes look at the shapes. So that would be one wing and the other wing and then the body and the tail and the legs. Legs are longer. Um, and then it kind of curves down. And it swoops up, and then the head, and then and the beak. Okay, I'm just letting my eyes look at it. So there's that, and then we erase that line, because that line is not good for the painting. It's the painting part. That's why we need to erase it. So now this might have a little bit more definition on those wings. Um might make that tail just kind of go out and I might erase that part and then this is definitely the legs so yeah that's how we do that and so you can see that that's one of the little cranes and it had this horizon line that was going through here 
but I also am looking and it has another line also here. So composition can be really um, key to doing something like this. I may want to vary the shoreline a little bit. Why? Because it makes it interesting though. So even if you can't draw a straight line, it probably will make it more interesting. But here we go with the lip and then I might do some kind of cliff and do some rocks. I don't know where this is. We're just following the picture that's here. And then they have some of the ripples on the water, but they have the bottom of the crane, which is going to be just a shadow. See how it's kind of shadowing and mimicking? There we go. So that's going to be a shadow. I didn't do it real. Um, detailed because I don't want it to be too dark on there. Hey, Linda Ball, good morning. Um, yeah, so you know it's crazy. Um, go, driving through my neighborhood yesterday, I went the long way around, and there were a bunch of statues of cranes. I'm like, what? Are cranes like really in style right now? So here we go. We're gonna paint this quickly. Hmm. A little sip of tea to get the vocal cords going um so yeah I just drew that super quick and that was just eyeballing it okay so another way we can do a drawing is so that one was the little crane where did I put your little crane there you are so if you look at this picture and you want to copy it I can't see through this, no light, even if I had a light underneath that paper could shine enough to make me see through this. So what I have somewhere, oh, here it is. So what I have here, let me show you, I have tracing paper. Um, what does it say, I haven't seen seen what the little heart is kind of seen this but i don't go anywhere what does that mean you don't go anywhere where you don't go that's okay i can't read the comment all the way sorry um but this is tracing paper what is tracing paper it is super um thin it's thin and you know how we use tracing paper? This is the thing that most people don't know know about. So I'm going to rub some. I'm going to rub some pencil mark right there. So I'm going to use my other pencil because I want to use this flat or the side of it. So see how I'm doing this? And just kind of going side to side. Like that. So now this has a bunch of that on it. And, oop, I don't know if that was the right way to do it. Hold on one second. Messed up already. Oops. So this is how they want you to do it. So I'm tracing it. You can see on this tracing paper. Of course, this shape <clears throat> is not that hard for y'all if you want to try it just eyeballing it. But this is one way you can do it. You see, I'm just going to rub that. I think I got it. Yep, okay, so now... Is this how we do it? Mm hmm Maybe not. Now we're going to do the back side of this with that pencil line. So we're going to just very lightly go on the back of this. Okay? 
Um, you can use chalk, you can use pencil line, but now we're going to flip it over and we're going to press. And Linda, I was going to try and show that little um, device you got me to help trace, but it is somewhere in my messy office right now. And since I just had a craft show, it's too messy. So there I kind of see the outline, if that makes sense, how I use that. Um, and I can go back in and I can make it darker now that I see. I see the outline kind of. Although it is not quite right, but that's okay. I'm going to have one that looks kind of like an eight-year-old did it. <laughs> oh, you haven't seen cranes. Well, there's like five houses in my neighborhood with cranes. They're like, you just drive by on the other side of the loop and there's cranes. Cranes. And statues of cranes. So I like my drawing better than the pencil tracing thing. But that's okay because we all, you know, are going to learn how to do these things in our own time, right? <clears throat> Another really cool idea, if you want to have um, an investment in drawing, it's this Da Vinci Eye. That is cool. Oh, yeah. So, Da Vinci Eye. I can give you a quick little tutorial. Ooh, today's inspiration. Draw this picture. That would be so cool. Um, what I'm going to do first is take a picture. So I'm going to take a photo of this crane painting. So now I have it on my phone. Okay, so it's in my photos. And then I go back to Da Vinci Eye. And I hit draw. And I've shown a couple of my friends in person about how to do this. <clears throat> like Barbara, I don't know who else I've shown, but there's a lot of um, techniques out there. So, oh, look at, look at my puppy. He's so cute. Um, but what we're going to do is this one. And there's two modes, classic mode and AR mode. Classic mode, you don't need anything at all. You don't need an anchor or whatever. But can you kind of see... That wherever I put this, you can see it on the paper. So let's see how close did I get to that drawing. And oh, oops, a little small. Got kind of close, y'all, but not quite. Okay, I want you to see how close. So that's the painting. That's my drawing. The painting, the drawing. Can you see that? Let me push it up here. Um, so that's the original. That's my drawing. It's kind of hard to see. So I didn't get the neck swooping just quite right. I didn't get the angle of the wing quite, quite right. But you know what? That's what being an artist is all about. You're going to be a little different than everyone else and that's what makes you unique. So for me, I think it's best to just go for it and draw. And you will improve. Like you may start off making things that look like, you know, an eight-year-old did it. <laughs> and that's okay because what happened to Picasso? He used to draw realistic at eight years old or five years old, I think. He drew very realistically because he was like a natural, gifted, miraculously gifted. So that was pretty cool. 
Um, but the thing about Picasso is he got pretty bored with doing realistic. And I think that's when he started doing the cubism and all the other artists around him, you know, be in community with other artists. So that's why I love doing my Thursdays at the coffee shop because we're all in community there and we can bounce ideas off each other. I love doing my watercolor class and having a group in the group me where we can share ideas and just encourage one another. And that's how we work. That's how people work is in community and so I'm really um excited to see what other people are gonna do I have a class on Sunday it's full y'all no more <laughs> no more people can come I think I'm gonna have like 12 people I don't know 10 or 10 people which is usually where I want to max out but we might have 12 but that's okay we can have six new people it's gonna be awesome and uh, Ones who come all the time can help the newbies. Um, and that's what, again, community, artists, that's what we need, right? So let's look at this drawing again and see what can I do. So my drawing is what my drawing is. And as a watercolor artist, I'm just going to use my clean water that I got this morning, which it was so filthy. It was not funny. Um, let's see. So I'm looking at the photograph, which I, sorry, I can't put on the screen at the same time, but that's okay. I wish I could, but I cannot. Um, but it looks like they ended up putting some of this like burnt sienna in here. See, I love watercolor. Look how fast I just colored that in. Linda, if you were doing this with markers or colored pencils, how fast would it be? It wouldn't be that fast, I don't think. <laughs> All right, then rinse, get some blue. And this blue is more gray. So you know how I like my paints gray. So I'm going to gray it, gray it up a little bit. And I like when some of the orange goes into the blue. And I'm just following around, doing the rinse. Just swipe. Swipe, swipe, swipe. So yeah, check that out. That's pretty cool. I probably should have left some white in there. Let me see if I can lift up. There we go. Um, so a lot of times people use the side of the brush and they just skip see if I can do some of this green. It's kind of like a greenish gray. See that? I have like a little piece of paper on there. That's okay. So yeah, just kind of put some things here and there. I don't know if I can move this at all, make that sheen go away. Oh, thanks, Linda. You did good. Thank you. Yes. It was close, right? And that was just eyeballing it. And I'll tell you what, drawing or painting eyes every day, that helped me. That helped my drawing skills a lot. Um, let's see, what color do we want to make these hills? Or like a purpley blue? I don't know. Let's mix a couple purples. I know I don't have my picture, my paints in here. So I'm just kind of mixing this navy blue with this kind of darker purple. Kind of back and forth I go, messing it all up. Then I put it on my palette where I had some paints gray. And it just makes this kind of grayish purple color. So I'm just going to go follow the lines on this cliff. And remember, we're just doing loose. This is a loose painting. Loose drawing, loose painting. It doesn't have to be exact. And I also have some of that burnt sienna in here. I just like to flick it in there. I don't know. Should be a little more purpley. 
And I do think that's a real word. I've heard other people say herpes. And maybe a little bit more of the blues in there. And so yeah, I got some thicker blues in there. That's kind of cool, isn't it? And always have a paper towel in your hands. Because, you know, you got to you gotta blot that out. And you need to lift if you don't like what you just did. Which I think I did just way too much of that blue in there. I want it to be a little more like a Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray. But I think I'm going to have a um, workshop for for um, basic watercolors too. And it's going to be focusing more on um, creating, creating a you know, your color palette and like how to mix all your colors and create different colors. Um, so that's something I want to kind of do. Now, see, that's so pretty in there. I love that in there. Um, so I've done this watery area. I might add a little more blues in here just to get some values like we talked about. You want to make some interest in there. And so it's definitely not going to be exactly like theirs, which is fine. You don't need to be exact like anyone else's. I like that. And I can water it down and then I can lift. And that's what's so great about watercolor. You can put down a large swash of paint and then go back and just lift you don't like it all. And I think I need to make that other background just a little bit darker. Yeah, I like that. And what else? What else should we put in here? Make that top just a little bit defined. That's a cliff, right? So we need to make it look kind of like a cliff. Ooh, it's a lot of Payne's gray in there. Yeah, I like it. What do you think? Do you like that dark? This is like some kind of hair in there now. There you go. How do I get them out? I usually tip them a brush. That's how I get them out. So I may end up adding a little bit more dark over here too, because I like that. I think it turned out nice. Hmm. What else? What else are we gonna do? Add that kind of orangey color back in. can blend it with some of the blue that I mixed. I like just touching right there and see how it blends a little bit. I like that. I like how watercolor looks. It's just pretty, right? So now that's super wet. We got to let that totally dry. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush because we're going to be doing the bird next, which sometimes if we're doing a bird, and it's kind of small, we need to make it make it more um, detailed, right? So here's the reflection of the bird in the water. So I'm going to re-wet that just because it'll make it kind of bleed a little bit. So I'm just going to re-wet real quick. And so watch what happens. I'm trying to keep it just where the bird's body is, but see how it's bleeding out a little? So it's kind of cool how it's going to be that reflection of the bird above. And it's just kind of watery. I want it darker in there. So that's one way to add. I might add some 
swivels for the reflections. Oop, that was too rough. Too rough. There we go. We might have got too much defi definition in there. Um, but that's okay. We can just do some really light highlights, maybe. There we go. That'll look good. Okay, when he starts to get closer to being dry up here, we're going to go in with this real dark Payne's Gray for the wing. We're going to do the neck area right here. And just like follow what I drew. And that's our train right there, I think. Maybe. Mm -hmm. So now these parts are going to be a little bit lighter. Just a little bit here for the tail. And the bottom of his feet are a little black there. But yeah, this wing needs a complete. Complete. And it is bleeding just a little bit, but I think that's going to be okay. Um, I'm just going to add a little shadow with this lighter blue. Much too much. Too little, too little. So it's like a shadow on the body from the wing. If you can see that. And now I'm going to do just a little bit of that goldish color for the beak kind of mimics the sand. And if you make his beak too big, you can always lift. Try again. Try again. There we go. And then I do kind of think his legs are I just added a little bit in the shadow or in the reflection in the water. So it's kind of cool how I'm doing that. And what else did we do? Oh, they have a bunch of these little little birds over here. I don't know what those are. We're just going to splatter and pretend they're, that I'm making some birds. And they do some little wings. I don't know what those are. I should have just left them out. But they kind of look like the little birds flying. Little tiny birds all taking off. Maybe. That's what I think. And then it does look like there was more of this bluey green in there. It's kind of pretty. And soft. I kind of want to make that just a little bit darker, a little bit more defined on the bottom because that's where the shadow was the most. So it's not easy to really play with that, but it's okay. It looks like there's some pen marks on their drawing, so you can always do a line wash, line and wash, which means we used um, watercolor. Um, proof markers, so water waterproof markers, and then drew it, and then water color. So that's one way of looking at it and doing. I didn't really finish the background. That's okay. Because um, I really just kind of liked what I was doing. But I like squigglies. I do a lot of squiggles. Squiggles are fun. So yeah, but that's that's one thing. Um, you know, I can get down on myself for 
you know, when things don't turn out how I want them to turn out, I'm sure you guys feel the same way. <clears throat> I'm going to make this one just a little bit darker because I want it to stand out. I might make this just a little bit darker as well. Still really wet down there. Kind of like that because it looks like it's reflecting more. Um, oh, wow. Your brother Dave had his daughter had a baby. Oh, my gosh. Congratulations. So you're an auntie. You've probably been an auntie, but it's always fun to have a new a new niece or nephew. Um, oh, Marianne made a card, and it's so pretty. I'll have to see it. Did she post it to our group? I'll have to look. She needs to post to our group. And hopefully she'll be there on Thursday. Hmm. All right, so I'm going to put this kind of off to the side and let it dry. So what's the next thing we want to learn about drawing? So here's something that's really cool that I have. Um, stamp set from Stamping Up. This, These are really pretty um, sketches of a bird and mushrooms and some flowers. It has some sayings. So a lot of people make cards just like Marianne. She had him on leap year. That's right. Okay, so I don't know if you remember my old neighbor, but her daughter was born on leap year. So she posted the other day how she's only had six birthdays. And I think she's 24 now. So it's kind of crazy, isn't it? That you don't have a birthday every year. I mean, you know what happens? You don't have a birthday. And you, it's, you know, you were on February 29th. And it's like, what happened? No birthday <laughs> for four years. That would be crazy. Wouldn't it be awesome, though, if you didn't age during those four years? But, yeah, you totally do, don't you? <laughs> so did you hear where my niece, Nicole, her daughter had a baby? I'm so excited. I wish I could fly out there and meet her. Um, she is so beautiful, like the most beautiful baby, because like, you know, most babies don't look good. Like even my own babies, I was kind of like, Ooh, Amanda looks like a little baby Yoda, only not green. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, Scarlett is a beautiful little baby. So, and I really am inspired to paint her. Like she's that beautiful. I want to paint her face, but so drawing faces, I'm going to use that book I got from the library to kind of help me sketch and do that yeah. well, yes it would I know it's a delay in the in the comments from what I'm talking about but hopefully I'll catch on <laughs> um but let me think what um so the let me show you again this the stamp set so we could make cards out of this right we could stamp it on here look at that's perfect that's perfect and that's perfect right so maybe you're not that great with drawing yet, right? So how how do we get better? Um, with my classes, I always have the first one we do is a... Oh, I don't have a block. Oh, blocks. Y'all, I need to clean my room. Does anyone want to come over and help me? clean a room <laughs> organize all this but um so I lost my train of thought but you can like stamp something instead we that's what we do at class we always stamp something first just so you can watercolor something instead of focusing on drawing because I know drawing is kind of one of those things that's harder for people to master all right, we're just going to put this on here, and I'm not really going for a really good um, image. I just want very light on there. Why? Because I just want the shape, because sometimes the shape is enough for me to get the rest on there. So I know that's reflecting 
So now I've got that and I can look at the picture. So I'll just set it over here so I can look at it. Why is that drizzle? Maybe it's a... All right, so I'm looking at the picture. I can see there's an eye. A little round eye. And his beak. And some right here. So see how I've got this already? And it's going to be um, I can just do some pencil lines to make the wings. And it just helped. Doing that little stamp just helped. Follow the direction of those. But um, keeping areas darker and lighter. And where his little neck is. So see, and like the angles of his legs, now I don't have to worry about doing that. But I will add his little feet because I don't have little feet on that branch in this drawing. Okay, so I did that, which the stamp helped me get the kind of outline, right? So what do we do next? We watercolor it, right? And we get smaller brush. So another thing about the workshop I want to do is show people, like, the difference in size of your brushes, shapes of your brushes, like a flat brush, a round brush. Um, an angled brush. Where's my angled brush? I had one. Oh, and a rigger. Which is just this long, skinny one. Um, and then, like, the bigger ones. So, I want to go over that in more detail with people in person. And kind of let them play more. Like, have, like, little exercises for them to do. Oh, congratulations on being... A new great auntie, right? Um, yes, I will paint her for sure. Like, I have finished this giant painting I'm doing. It's four feet wide by two feet tall. And it's got five dogs in it. So, um, I've got it sketched. I need to start working on it. Okay, so I don't know the colors on this bird. So, I'm just going to do some paints gray. And you know how the paper is your white. So I'm staying clear of that part around his eye. But see how it's kind of a light color right there? And it's just kind of real pale. There's still some color, but it's real pale. And then I want to add maybe some of that brownish color. I think that would be pretty. And then, you know, going back to that other bird um, that I was doing, or that I showed you at the beginning, how detailed it was. Let me show you. This one. Look at the detail. And then this one where it's no detail, right? So it's just like stylistic. And that's the thing. When you start drawing, you'll get better and better. And like see how this page, it just shows the different angles of the bird. And then they added a little bit of watercolor in there. Um, so just get, get a couple pictures off of Pixabay. Print them out if you need to trace them. Or use that DaVinci Eye. Download that app. It's really easy. So like this book is pretty cool. It shows you how you can do realistic with lots of detail or you can go real simple. 
can just sketch real quick. But yeah, you can learn to draw. It just takes time. Because like we all started somewhere, didn't we? We all started somewhere with our names. I don't know if I like this color. It's bright. <laughs> it's a bright color. But I don't know if I like it. I might add some more. Some red. And then maybe some of this blackish color. But see, there's always going to be a shadowy side, right? Shadows are nice. You gotta have shadows. And then I'm just gonna get some of that white back in there. So see how you lift? Watercolor is so great. I don't think you can do that with markers. You can't do that with colored pencils lifting. So that's kind of one of the reasons why I've, I've been doing watercolor for so long now. Um, well, once I started because I just love how easy you can change change what it looks like. So like if you don't like something, you can change it pretty easily. Let's see, what color is the beak gonna be? Like a yellow? Let's try yellow. I need some more um, Naples yellow. I might have to go to the store and buy some. So this little beak. Um. I would do some this darker brown for his little legs, leggies. So I might do some more of that yellow. And here's another another thing I want to show y'all maybe in person when I do my classes. See how liquid, how watery this is? It's like almost a tea consistency. If I put that on the legs, it's going to spread way too much. Like, it's just going to be too liquidy. And so, I don't like that. So, now let's lift that up. Let's get rid of that. And see, you can just lift things up and get rid of them. But, if I wanted to make those legs stand out more, I need to make this thicker. So I add a little bit of paint in there, and it's, with these um, pan paints, you know, they're, they're dried. So you have to um, re-wet them in order to use them. And sometimes trying to get the right consistency of paint to water ratio is harder. Just because you have to really dig your brush into these. And get it in there. Um, but I do like, you know, mixing back and forth, trying to get it just right. So now this is pretty good. And another trick I'll, I want to show you or tell you about is, so I have paint on here, but it's really still a lot of water in my brush. So I just want to dry it, dry it off absorb all the water out of there. Now I can just take a little bit. Maybe a little bit more. Like see? And it's thicker. It's kind of cool. And another thing too, and I might have made his legs just a little bit too wide, but it's okay. This is going to be the tree trunk that he's sitting on. Might add a little Payne's gray to the bottom, just to make it kind of watery there. And see, when you start doing this, you'll get better and better at it. Um, but yeah, I I liked um, I liked the example I've um, told people before about 
when you first were in kindergarten, you didn't know how to draw your name. So then you had to learn and they printed out letters on a piece of paper for you to trace. So if you think that tracing is cheating as an artist, um, I don't know where, where you get that idea. I think a lot of times when I was younger, um, I was told that you need to probably um, learn how to draw. And if you don't know how to draw, you shouldn't be an artist. Maybe that was, you know, when I was young, that kind of comment deterred me from um, tracing. But I've used the Da Vinci Eye to help get accurate drawings. And once the drawing is done, like this is the part where the paint is going to be all me. I don't use the drawing app to paint. I do the drawing app just to draw the, the proportions right. But even with my little one minute reels or whatever um, on YouTube and Instagram, I've been doing, um, I try to not sketch it first with the Da Vinci eye, I just try to do it by eye. And I've done a couple of paintings where I haven't even drawn it and just looked at the painting photograph or the person and then just started painting the shapes that I see. So just look at your um, reference photo or the still life or the person. If someone's sitting in front of you and you're painting them, just do that. Oh, you love the bird, Linda? Thank you. It's turning out. This is the part where I got to let it dry. This is like the part where I can't be, I'm not patient. I'm not patient, y'all. I do have my heat tool, but I only have a power strip in here with three plugs in it. So basically, um, I have to unplug the computer to plug in the heat tool. I don't want to unplug my lights right now because my lights are what help me to paint and see what I'm doing <laughs> so I need a power strip with like 20 plugs that's what would make me happy I need one with 20 plugs so maybe I'll go invest in one today I know I've kind of um I've been on a budget y'all and I've been doing so good but I want to I want to buy a couple things so and I did pretty good at my craft show yesterday um, if you go to my community tab, you'll see a picture of my craft show booth that I set up. And, um, so I, I got a commission to do a couple of, uh, dogs and then I got a, um, couple ladies interested in coming to classes and then I did sell some of my smaller paintings and I sold one of my sunflowers, um, with the bee. I love painting bees. They're just so fuzzy and cute all of them but let's see how my little bird's doing is he almost ready is he almost to the stage where I can start painting his eye and stuff hmm it's really one of those stages where you gotta be you can't do it too soon or I'll mess it up let me see what happens if I paint his eye right now. Let's see. And I'm only a little glint, but if I if I mess up and paint the whole eye, guess what? I can use a white gel pen. That's not cheating either. You can use acrylic paint or white gouache. I'm just gonna paint the whole eye because it's too hard to make a tiny little glint. Little tiny glint. I might do just a little bit of this fun kind of outlines. It's this Mars black that I'm using. I don't know what kind of bird this is going to be. Maybe a little bit under here just to make a shadow on his beak. And then make a shadow on his leg. And there's the cutesies. And see, I don't know if you noticed that bleeding up there. It kind of, kind of messed up because it's still wet. Still wet in there. See how it's not making any definitive lines? You might have to wait. So 
definitely play. This is this is the thing that I encourage everybody. You gotta you gotta start somewhere. You gotta play, and you gotta practice. And that's the one thing that I've loved about doing those daily videos is that it's made me have to practice. But see, that's still too wet. I need to wait. And I'm impatient. <laughs> totally impatient. But that's okay. So, um, what is the time? Oh, our time is almost up. It's 11.02. I tried and just come on here for an hour. Okay, so the 16th, I'm going to have to either go really early on my video live on Monday or later. So maybe afternoon because I got to be somewhere for one of my small groups at church. Um, and so that's March 16th. I will not be here at 10 a.m. I will be either 9 a.m. or noon or maybe even 1. But we'll see. We'll see what time I decide to do. I'll let you guys know in the community tab and just kind of post on Facebook and Instagram to let you know to look for it at what time. Um, but you know me, I like to just be um, spontaneous. <laughs> um have y'all been watching The Chosen in the theaters? So, like, um, this is one of their mugs that they've sold on their website. I just love the color teal. Teal is beautiful. Love it. Um, but, yeah, I've been watching it. And the last two episodes for season four are out right now. So, if you haven't watched any of the seasons, go binge watch The Chosen. They're on, like. I think they were on Netflix. They've been on TV. You can probably look at them on YouTube. But the Angel app is the best place to find all the episodes. Um, what's so pretty? The bird? Um, it's getting there. It's getting there. He's got to dry. And I got to put the little white gel glint. You know, white gel pen. My best friend right here. These are so cheap too. Get these at Michael's. Um, jelly Roll. Y'all, they have individual ones, too, at Michael's. You can just go get one if you want. But I get the three-pack that have three different sizes. And it's like five bucks for three of them. So you can't go wrong with these. And, and they do. I use them a lot. And so, I, you know, it's good to go through them like that and use them. Don't, don't be a hoarder. Don't be a hoarder like I am. I'm always a hoarder. And don't use my expensive stuff. So I like when I find inexpensive stuff that I like to use. Because then it won't be hoarded. <laughs> um, the bird's pretty. But that chosen cup. Yeah, I love my chosen cup. It does have a lid. I just didn't put the lid on it today. I should put a lid on it in case, you know, I put my paintbrush in it. But, um, oh, I met this wonderful man, um, artist at the craft show on Saturday and his name is Carlos I have to get his um card out to find his last name but um he painted some paintings with coffee watercolored with coffee I want to try that like I have some coffee left over I can like get a cup of it and try painting with it I don't know how how thick you have to brew it or whatever how dark you have to brew it to get it to look good but I might try that I might try painting with some coffee but the best thing about him was he was a believer in Jesus he had painted um the empty tomb he painted the cross he painted um some other um Christian imagery and I just loved it and um I was thinking about oh don't fall over do not fall over I have too much stuff y'all too much stuff over here but um, I was thinking about painting in my Bible today, and then I just didn't get around to it. Because um, an hour goes by super fast, doesn't it? But, like, here's our little bird. I just need to add maybe a little more detail on his feathers and the little white glint in his eye. But he's cool. But look at this one. How good did it turn out, huh? It looks pretty good. If you didn't see the original, you might like this one better. Who knows? Um, but it has like a blob of water there. I don't know how that happened. But um, so today I was looking in my Bible and I was like, what am I going to talk about? 
Um, I just turn randomly sometimes to, in my Bible and start reading. And sometimes I don't understand what I'm reading, so I have to go and research what I've read. And that's how I um, stay in communication with God. And I actually can hear from Him a lot of times when I'm very um, stressed out, anxious, worried. Um, if I just start Googling Scripture for what time it is, and we've done this before. So, like right now, it's 11.07. If we wanted to, we could Google 11.07 and see what pops up. But another way you can do, um, do it is just turn randomly to your paper Bible. But, um, so like right now, if I like Googled Scripture uh, 1107, let's see what happens. For the Lord is righteous, he loves justice, the upright will see his face. That's Psalm 11, 7. So see how there's like so many books in the Bible. Turn to one and just look up the chapter 11 and then verse 7 and then it'll it could speak to you it, it, there's so many different ones and like sometimes i scroll through and i'm like which one first corinthians 11 7 hebrews 11 7 um ooh, hebrews 11 7 y'all so i was listening to some sermon today about um enoch being taken by God before the flood. He spared him from the flood. And so that's like the Old Testament rapture. Enoch was raptured. And then God did not flood the earth until his son Methuselah had died. And his son Methuselah lived the longest of any human being. He lived 969 days or years. So that is amazing. Um, Saturday is Arbor Day and Daphne. Oh my gosh, girl. I have some trees I need to cut down that I planted that I got from Arbor Day that are like 60 feet tall now and their roots are everywhere messing up my driveway. So <laughs> I don't think I'll be planting any more trees. But maybe if they had some live oaks, um, Jeremy might want some for, he wants a chestnut tree um, for our hunting camp because like deer like to eat chestnuts and stuff so um but okay so hebrews eleven seven. let me just read this to you um noah being warned by god concerning the events as yet unseen in reverent fear constructed an ark for the saving of his household y'all love this so basically God spoke to Noah. He was the only man on earth that was righteous. Everybody else was evil all the time. Their thoughts were evil all the time. Everybody else. And some say that there might have been over 8 billion people on the earth at that time. Some scholars say that. And to think about how there's so many people on the earth that were so evil. And God was still patiently waiting. He didn't smite them. When he could have. He was patiently waiting. And he gave Noah a word. And told him to build the ark. And out of reverent fear. He did it. Because he, he obeyed God. Like that's so cool. I want to be that obedient. Like I want to be the one who people say. That girl's crazy. You know why is she building an ark. You know God's not. It hasn't even rained ever. Like there's no flood. Nothing. Never seen a flood. And. Noah's building this big old ark. Everybody looking at him going, that person crazy. Um, so I want to be that person who's so obedient to God that they say, that person's crazy. And I think it's getting harder and harder to do that in this day and age, to be faithful and obedient with social media and everything going on. Like it's just so hard to trust God rather than what we're seeing in the news or seeing around us but I try not to let the news worry me and really you should just watch it for like 10 minutes and then turn it off you shouldn't focus on the news all day long I say don't stick your head in the sand but don't be um 
Don't be too focused on it either. Don't be letting it rule your uh, state of mind because we know who is in control of who's in control. So it doesn't matter who's president. It doesn't matter who's in Congress. It doesn't matter who's governor. It doesn't matter who's your chief of police. It doesn't because God put them there. They are there because God allowed it. And that's, you know, sometimes bad things are going to start happening and it's going to get worse and worse. Because we, we were told by Jesus that we're going to start seeing the birth pains. And, you know, just like in child labor, when the birth pains get stronger and stronger, that's when you know the baby's going to come. And that's how we know when um, the rapture is going to come is because these birth pains are going to get closer and closer. Like the earthquakes are going to get closer and closer. The fires. Um, the turmoil. I mean... And I do think it's important, and I want to encourage you, if you're a Christian, just to not be living in fear. Don't be like people around you living in fear. Be the one that's got your head on on your shoulders straight in that says, you know what? I trust in God. It's not going to be bad. In the afterlife, where I'm going, it's going to be no pain, no hunger, no sorrow. Um, it's going to be this beautiful peaceful world and it's not going to be like floating on clouds like some people depict it with little cupids and harps playing all the time I think it's going to be like real earth like trees and animals and um streams fruit you can be able to eat whatever you want and not have any waste it's going to be like beautiful 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 and it's going to be peaceful and joyful and everyone's just going to be able you could run and never never feel out of breath never feel the pain in your side like have you ever been running so hard that you get that stitch in your side and you're like ow I can't run anymore in heaven you're going to be able to run and not ever ever feel the pain of that so it's going to be it's going to be awesome Oh, Linda says, I like the way you explain that, comparing with birth pains. I get it now. Yes, right? So, see, we're not quite there yet. I think we've got, I don't know if we've got a couple months or a couple years, um, but I wanted to encourage all of you um, listening today that it's not too late to start preaching to people about Jesus. And I mean preaching not like at them, Talk to them. Encourage them to know Jesus because he's the one who died on the cross for our sins. So we don't have to die on a cross for our sins. When we come to the judgment day, he's the one who stands there in our place. He stands in our place. And we won't stand there. God won't remember what we did wrong because he'll see our faith in Jesus took away that sin. So it's going to be like we're perfect. It's going to be like we're perfect. And he'll be like, okay, come on in. Open them pearly gates, right? Um, and I'm just so excited. And I do think it's going to just be an overwhelming amount of love that God has for us that we'll be able to actually experience. Um, as humans, we can't really experience that. Although I was trying to tell this guy, the artist I was telling you about, Carlos, about how I felt God's presence. I felt him put his hand on my head and say, it's going to be okay. And that just comforted me so much. And it didn't happen because I went to church on Sunday. It didn't happen because I was doing Bible studies. It happened because I prayed and I had a prayer closet and I would go in there with my coloring, coloring book, you know, stuff, like my colored pencils and my watercolors and paints and whatever I had, and I would open my Bible randomly and start reading, and it would speak to me, and that's how God spoke to me, and it was a relationship with him, and any time I had a stressful moment in my life, I could go to my Bible, open it just randomly, and it would say, you are not alone. Whenever I felt lonely, lonely and I opened it, it said, you are not alone. Whenever I went to my Bible and opened it when I was feeling accused of doing things it said you are not 
to blame. You are not at fault. And I was like, what? Just like when I was doing the live and we painted mountains. And then I said, let's find some scripture. And it said, if you tell this mountain to move, it will. And I'm like, what? So that's how good God is. He speaks to me. He's like, I love Jacqueline. I speak to Jacqueline. Jacqueline loves me and we have a relationship. And I have to remember to go to him. So many times it is hard in this day and age to go to our Father in Heaven rather than Google. Or go to our Father in Heaven rather than, um, you know, if you're young, to your parents. Or if you're old, to your children. Or if you're married, to your spouse. You know what I'm saying? You look to other people to help you out. And what does God say? He says, he will never leave you nor forsake you. And that he's there with you always. So that, I think, means he wants us to come to him first. But I'm not good at that. I need a reminder as well. So this is for me too, to just trust in him and not worry. And I hope that's been an encouragement for you all. Because I just love you all. And I'm so grateful that you're here. And um, supporting me and my channel. So if you haven't, like and subscribe. I know that's a cliche, but it's always helpful if you do that. Um, and if you stuck this stuck with this video this long, then that's great. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, and I love you, and I hope you all have a blessed day. Mwah.